Okay, so um, hello everybody also from my side. Uh, I'm going to give a short uh, summary of the, the Daria view uh, to complete the picture, Clarin Daria Zesta. Uh, uh, we were working with Lore uh, and me on, on this uh, set of slides. Um, yeah, let's go to it. Uh, short summary of kind of no-brainers of requirements and best practices in general, and what are the Daria activities? And then a specific use case, or be more try to be more concrete on the vocabulary management for for the shock uh, SSH open marketplace, which is being developed in the shock project, as Nicola already mentioned earlier and Clara. Uh, yeah, so I th think we heard some of these in the previous uh, presentations as well. So I ran through those quickly, but uh, I would like to distinguish between the requirements. On, for the vocabularies and for the platforms. So for the vocabularies, uh, especially requirements for what for, so that they can be reused is uh, I think, one could, so they should be well-crafted. That means they should have a good coverage of, uh, of the described dimension because oftentimes we, um, uh, we see many, many vocabularies being developed ad hoc in in various applications, and but they are then very specific to the to the to their scope, and don't lend themselves well for for reuse. And the other thing is explicit semantics. Uh, so they really that needs to go work into not just putting a list of terms that I want to use, but also really describing explicating what what do we mean by them, and that's also so it needs definitions as examples. And on the other side, there is the vocabulary platforms. Uh, that yes, I mean we heard that a lot of times. SCOS data model is kind of the de facto standard that should be supported. Um, uh, there should be a well established or, or the, the platform should uh, uh, support a curation workflow um, uh, and including especially as we heard also the seeing the history and so that it is transparent how the the uh, vocabulary or the concepts evolve um, yeah and make the vocabularies or the individual concepts available through an API uh, and I will come to this lookup method later but I was glad to hear that uh, to, to ring the bell the, to hear the, the keyword there also in uh, Slava's presentation uh, then we have uh, and best practices um, published vocabularies linked open data ideally in this cost data model as a, to provide definition and examples, and then try to reuse existing vocabularies, uh, not reinventing the wheel, the standing phrase, right? Uh, linking to existing vocabularies, so actually creating the, the graph, the knowledge graph, or the, the relations between vocabularies as a key for semantic interoperability, um, and make them available in the operating environment. So that's because uh, vocabularies for themselves, I would say, are nice, but they actually are only useful when they are applied in the corresponding uh, applications. So only then they can act as a semantic bridge between various data sets. Uh, and for that, it is important that the authors, the people who create the data, uh, have these vocabularies available at the point of entry of the data. So basically these are autocomplete fields that should be fed from, from defined vocabularies. And there again, I would refer to the nice example from Slava of the sem um, semantic gateway. Um, good, then uh, what are Dari activities? Uh, in this respect, there is a dedicated working group on these hours maintenance. We heard about the big bond these hours. Uh, there were some activities in the previous project, especially in the Partenos project, there is a whole deliverable on reference resources. And there is this, and one of the results were this compilation of Partenos vocabularies. Um, um, yeah, linked here so you can have a look. And then there is, we have in Daria a central vocabulary service based on Cosmos uh, under Vocabs Daria EU, um, where we try to publish vocabularies relevant for the, for the community. And so this Cosmos, as we heard, or we know, uh, supports this cost model and provides a nice API. Uh, so, so it's a kind of a good platform and, and, um, 
that simplifies the reuse of the vocabularies when we when they are available. So again, here I would like to refer to Slava's uh, Slava's point that uh, when you have a vocabulary in Cosmos, you're actually uh, three quarters of the way there uh, because then you can easily uh, uh, fit it or, or link it uh, or integrate it into into your application. Uh, then one specific example, uh, the Tadira, Tadira is a taxonomy of digital research activities in the humanities and has been there for quite some while. And there has been a, a massive effort in the last year from, come on, so I should close Zoom now, this is not, a, not the ideal time for that, um, to update this vocabulary and consolidate it. Uh, um, and Again, here are the links for the information about the, the new version and also uh, it's the published version uh, of the vocabulary under, under Vocabs. Um, uh, the nice thing is that the Tadira has been used in various existing, so exactly this kind of use of the, of the vocabulary in various applications. Uh, the SSK, the Standardization Survival Kit in Parthenos, uh, the, the Digital Humanities Bibliography, uh, Esotero Library uh, in TAPOR is a uh, um, catalog of, of tools in, in humanities, uh, DH course registry, etc. Uh, the bad thing, well, bad, uh, the slight problem with that is that it has been used exactly there, there exactly we see the problem of when uh, the vocabulary is not available nicely through an API that though the vocabulary has been used in these uh, um, applications, it hasn't been um, integrated very well. And each of these applications basically uh, refer to the individual concept of the vocabulary in a slightly different way. So you could say you have kind of uh, dialects there and it, uh, of, of Tadira and they are not linked through the um, stable URIs, to the stable identifier of the individual concepts but by, by labels and oftentimes in various uh, variations. So kind of to link it back to the actually, or, or recognize what are the concepts that are linked to uh, will be a separate task. And then there is a second uh, challenge uh, of the old vocab Tadira vocabulary and uh, now the new version, which has some slight also changes in the, uh, in the structure and uh, in the definitions. Uh, to map bit, uh, so that you uh, uh, to align, so to say, these data from the from the applications to the new version of Tadira. So this is still ahead of us, but at least now we have a nice stable um, version of um, uh, of the vocabulary to as a, as a reference point to which we can work towards. Okay, another. Um, best practice or, or aspect is uh, uh, ensures knowledge, knowledge sharing. Uh, so in, this is not a specific to a vocabulary, but kind of the broader scope around it or context around this is to uh, basically preach uh, or, or disseminate or um, uh, do missionary work on uh, convince or explaining how vocabularies work and how, why, how are they useful. And it's just one example of our former colleague, Senia Zaitseva, who created a a elaborate uh, um, training material on, on controlled vocabularies and scores on the Daria campus. So it's a bit of a, a advertisement here, I, but I, this is just an example. There are many such uh, certainly uh, training materials or information on how to use vocabularies, but we think that this is also part of the best practice. So to inform about uh, the training or the controlled vocabularies and the use. Okay, and now I would like to turn to the marketplace, uh, SSA, open marketplace which we are developing in shock in birth package 7 and uh, the issue of managing vocabulary is there uh, we did a first so marketplace is meant as a catalog if you wish or a discovery platform for tools services all kinds of resources regarding the research activities in SSH um, also collecting training materials and especially also workflows so how do you do things uh, so it's not just a registry of tools, but it's really meant to answer question of how can I work on a thing. Uh, and as a discovery platform, it is crucial to have good controlled vocabularies to 
describe the items there and also to for the users then to again be able to find them um, so we did in, uh, in the specification of the platform in the deliverable d71 we did an overview of or, or quick or survey or overview of, of potential of vocabularies potentially applicable uh, for in the marketplace uh, obviously Tadira is there and and because we are concentrating in the marketplace on the on the research activity on the on the how uh, it is kind of a natural uh, primary uh, index or, or uh, uh, accessing way of accessing this information uh, is to have the taxonomy of the research activities uh, 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 using um, then but yeah, and we will see also for the other uh, obvious demand types for for uh, for the resources and for the input formats of the individual tools and so on. Um, but basically, we knew that we cannot foresee uh, in for right from the start what will be the uh, vocabularies or even dimensions pro descriptors needed for all of them for the items. So we established a in a data model, a custom a mechanisms where we can create custom properties, uh, vocabulary based properties as we go. So as we see or uh, integrate new sources, because marketplace is fed mainly from existing sources, um, and we encounter different descriptions there, data, uh, we do a manual mapping process where we on, on the field level and see which of the fields in the source uh, are semantically, semantically equivalent to uh, the properties that we already have uh, and try to map those or if not then we create new properties and there we again try to see which would be the vocabulary uh, best suited to describe it. Um, they're faced with, but I will come to that uh, in, in the next slide. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the question is, we need a full-blown basically vocabulary management. So we need to be able to create new vocabularies or just existing ones, um, manage the vocabularies in the sense of adding uh, or describing and uh, managing the concepts, and then the mapping between vocabularies, especially between those that we find at the sources and those that we decided uh, should be used um, as a normative uh, vocabulary on our side in the properties. Currently, we are using a uh, pool party uh, uh, taxonomy server as uh, the vocabulary management tool, um, which is a commercial tool by a semantic web company who is partnering the project. Um, so it's a wonderful tool and it's a part of a big suit that all works wonderfully together. So, so this really helps us at the moment to be to work quickly and to concentrate on the ingestion process and so on. Uh, but it has the small caveat of being commercial commercial tool. So this is not set in stone. Uh, we, we will need to see how that this what how this will be uh, or what if the vocabulary management will stay the taxonomy, the full part taxonomy server in the long term. Uh, but again, here we, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, emphasis was on uh, having an exit, exit strategy, so to say, and ensuring that and taxonomy server works nicely with SCOS, so we can import and export all the information, all the vocabularies there with SCOS, uh, so there is no danger of technological lock in there. Um, and the main challenge that we see uh, is how to deal with candidate concepts, so that or, or how to deal with yeah newly encountered concepts. So we, uh, well, as we go ingest from various sources, we encounter new values that previously maybe were not in in the properties or in the vocabularies that we have, uh, and this ingestion process happens automatically. So the question is um, uh, how to manage this ones uh, this. Uh, and integrate, so to say, them this this candidate candidate concept or this encountered concept into the vocabulary. We consider them as candidate concepts, and they need. And the problem is, or the challenge there is, that the ingest is automatic process, but the decision if a candidate concept becomes a real concept or is merged to an existing concept has to be a human decision. 
So there needs to be an there is an intervening or there's an interaction between the automatic process and the, the manual uh, decisions, uh, which poses a certain certain challenge. I won't go here into the detail, um, but it's important is to uh, recognize that we have three components uh, that need to integrate, in, uh, interact, or or be synchronized, and that is the ingester. Uh, the core where the so marketplace core where the data is stored and is ingested into and the vocabulary manager which we consider a separate component um, okay I yeah and then uh, this is actually a picture <laughs> I, uh, from 2014 from a present uh, presentation of mine uh, where I was already thinking of the of, and I said that the towards the, the title of the presentation was towards knowledge hub step one vocabularies so, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, trying to depict the problem that we have vocabularies in different places. Some of them are at external authoritative sources. Some of them are internal and should be, could, could be, or you want to adapt them uh, locally. Uh, and you need, you want to all of these vocabularies have available uh, for the client application under a through a lookup uh, method, so to say, exactly as I said, for autocomplete and so on. Um, so this, this vocabulary proxy, which I would say currently I would call it semantic gateway from, from Slava, uh, is, a, uh, is a unification uh, layer across the, the diversity of the, of the various uh, application uh, vocabularies. And also here is the distinction between you may want to uh, query an existing vocabularies at source or you may want to fetch it and have a separate a local cache of it. Uh, okay, details. Okay, and last slide. Um, this is our current situation. So it's not that simple to have a vocabulary repository in, in our experience. Uh, maybe we overcomplicate it, but these are the components that we think of or have now in our management workflow of vocabularies. There is the vocabulary repository uh, at the source, which is Cosmos. It has a browser uh, for the user consumption. It has an API for the uh, uh, machine uh, access. Um, but the, the, the vocabularies can come from an external authoritative source. Uh, they can come from a vocabularies editor or from an application. Uh, uh, then there is a ingest process so we distinguish between the editor and the, the repository itself and want to have a kind of defined release process so a vocabulary new version of the vocabulary first goes into staging to see if it if it's fine and after a few iterations we decide this is a stable production version we release it to the public repository at the same time we want to uh, for long-term preservation uh, deployed to or ingested into our repository, data repository Arche, um, uh, kind of the, the, the cost dump of it. Um, and uh, yeah, and the most important or the most challenging thing I see here is that, uh, that once the vocabulary is, is deployed it can be used by applications uh, again again uh, along this lookup method so uh, give me concept from vocabulary and so on uh, also a voc application may decide to have a dump of the vocabulary to use it to locally for performance reasons uh, but uh, it, here the circle is closed that oftentimes and this is exactly also our experience in, in the shock marketplace that the vocabulary is actually come from or maybe the users want to manage the vocabularies normally inside their application as, as part of their application so how to close this circle uh, that the vocabulary is in uh, uh, in a separate um, uh, as a separate resource published on the vocabularies repository but at the same time uh, available and even editable in the specific third party uh, client application um so we don't have a final answer here and i'm uh, uh would be very curious to hear some uh silver bullet solutions here okay thank you